Source Nation. Join us now for The Pendulum with Dr. Samori Swiger, a platform that encourages the four D's of philosophy, discussion, discourse, dialogue, and debate. Prepare to travel from the past, present, and have discussions of future implications and projections with a correlation to African Americans. These topics are intended to grab your attention, cause contemplation, and encourage some form of action. From the world, to the White House, to the hood and everything good, the pendulum is swinging your way. Source Nation, here is your host, Dr. Samori Swiger. But this is the pendulum with Doc Swag. And I'm right back in the saddle again with you. And so today we're going to be talking about Humpty Dumpty. I mean, Trumpty Dumpty. All the king's horses and all of the king's men. That's what we're going to be discussing today. So with that being said, Source Nation, once again, I'm wishing you tremendous blessings with health, family, love, career, success, and spiritual progress and the accomplishment of your dreams. Now, Source Nation, we're going to get intellectually intimate. And before we get it all started, get your coffee, get your wine, your water, if you want to turn your water into wine. And make sure you pass me my shoehorn so I can put my foot all up in the issues of the day. Make sure you share your link with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, other social media platforms. I'm your host, Dr. Samori Swaggart, a.k.a. Doc Swag. And I want to welcome you to my show, The Pendulum. Ah, I had to get my coffee. Now, some may say, why do you call your show The Pendulum? Well, The Pendulum is an apparatus that people associate with the clock. It gauges time and space. It traverses through time in a constant backward and forward motion. Some will say retrograde to anterograde. And this is what we'll be doing throughout the show as we engage topics. We have to connect the dots from the past to the present to the future. The show is designed to encourage your four Ds, debate, dialogue, discussion, and discourse. Gather your friends and family as we prepare to travel from the past, the present, and have discussions of future implications and projections with a correlation African Americans from the world to the White House to the hood and everything good. The pendulum is swinging your way. Now, today, Source Nation family, we are going to do a analysis of Donald Trump's administration since his election in November 2016 to his inauguration in January, all the way up to where we are now. And the reason I started to show out with the Trumpy Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty, is it's kind of apropos. It's symbolic. Uh, it's relative to what we see. Um, if you listen to the lyrics, it says, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. So for one, Humpty Hump sounds and rhymes with Trump. Uh, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Donald Trump does want to build this wall that he claims between Mexico and the United States um, to deal with uh, illegal immigration and the issues that accompany that with uh, illegal immigrants and, and the visas and, and, and immigration, ICE and all of that. So he's sitting on this wall um, and it looks like he's also may take a great fall. 
Um, and then when you talk about all the king's horses and all the king's men, if you look at the setup of the administration or politics, uh, you can look at it like a chessboard. And um, you look at all the, all the king's men. Well, it looks like all the king's men have taken a fall. And they're not able to put Trump T back together again. Um, so we'll be going over all of that. We'll be going over all of the different people that have been fired from Trump's uh, presidential administration and campaign uh, panel um, to those that have resigned um, and seeing where we're going. Then we're also going to talk about the uh, war industry economy stocks and how Trump's uh, election and administration how does that reflect financially and economically with the war industry economy stocks? So that's what we'll be talking about tonight and other issues that have occurred uh, while Trump has been in office. But we're going to take a little break. And before we do, we're going to thank our sponsors because they make all this possible. So our sponsors are Zuliana Health, Wellness and Fitness, Paper to Film Productions, Revolution Mills, Renovations, Meet My Types Matchmaking, Blend to Blend Juice Bar Boutique. Urban Grandstand Digital, New Covenant of Praise Worship Center. So us nation, we're going to take a quick break. And after the break, we'll be back to discuss Trump tea. Trump and all the king's horses and all the king's men and the war industry economy stocks. We'll be back in a few. Hold tight. Peace. So us nation, stay tuned. You're listening live to The Pendulum with Dr. Samori Swigert. Radio Network is just one of the many platforms that is used to fulfill dreams of our listeners and create a purpose that will impact the lives of our communities, cities, and the world. It is often said that great things will happen when a group of driven people work together to accomplish one goal. We are giving people the opportunity to have a voice, translate words that haven't been heard, and paint pictures that no one has seen. Source Radio Network is fueling your life's purpose. How can you listen? www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash source radio. Hey you, do you know your history? Do you know your culture? We have a beautiful history full of triumph, determination, perseverance, love, hope, faith, family, and community. And as your great degree, I, I want to share that history with you. Agrio? It's pronounced Grio, or in English, Agriot. It's a West African term for the person who keeps up with the genealogy, the history, the culture, shares the stories of the people, and so much more. We're like a walk-in library, full of knowledge and ready to share. I'm going to take you into the history and the culture of your people from all over the world. Agriot's purpose is to serve the people. That's right. As the great Griot, I am here to serve you. Because the more you know, the more you grow. Wait, that's not my quote. Oh well, it's the truth. The Great Griot, a brand new Black History Web Series. Check us out online at www.thegreatgrio.com or subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash thegreatgrio. You know how we do, Rockefeller, forever. Catch me, skating through your town, putting it down, y'all relating, no waiting, I'll make your block in for red hot, I'm like Satan, y'all feel a struggle, y'all think a little, hustle behind the wheel, 
trying to escape my trouble Can't stop the greeting me I'm talking sweet the keys Cursing the very God That brought this reef to be My life is based on sacrifices Jews like Isis And fools that think I slip you around You get your guys hit They built me to be filthy On some I do or die for real, the price of leather's got me deeper than ever. And just think, when this here, I'm trying to feel me. Politics is usual. I took my Frito to Tito in the district. Bless me with some BS, somethings I could live with. Stop fronting and for the dough I raise. Gotta get the praise, no disrespect to you Make sure your word is true I'm taking wages down in Vegas just in case Tyson have a major night off That's clean money, the tax write off You ain't seen money in your life When it comes to this cheese, y'all like three blind mice I'm smoking bros who pump willy, I expose The furthest you chilies, been is the poker nose My portfolio reads, leads to Don Corleone Please Ten year belly on, heavy on the wrist. I face you with the diamond blooded Jesus and blind your face shoes for life. Shrive, jigger, I keep it tight. Politics is usual. You feel my triumph never. Feel my pain, I'm lying, low in the leather's iron The best that's ever came, the game changes life My mind just ain't right, We rewind, get this dope I guess it ain't your night, sucking me in like a vacuum I remember telling my family I'll be back soon That was December, 85 and Jay-Z rise 10 Years later got me wise, still can't break my underworld top I wear black a lot, in the act, act a lot Got matching VCRs, a huge Magnavox 10 inch, green like spinach Pop ones, that's spinach It's a lot of big money in my sentence Hitting towards a mill, the book Written, I kill like that chick, baby One, two, cat, yeah, I do that Ain't no stopping the champagne From popping the drawers, from dropping the law From watching, I hate them Politics is usual Welcome back, Source Nation. You're listening live to The Pendulum with Dr. Samori Swigert. All right, Source Nation, welcome back to The Pendulum. I'm your host, Dr. Samori Swigert, and as I said before the break, we're going to be talking about Donald Trump and the Trump administration. We're going to be talking more so in depth about all the king's horses, all the king's men, all the people that were in Trump's uh, campaign uh, pocket and in his administrative cabinet uh, that have either been fired or resigned. And then we're going to be talking about the war industry economy stocks and we're going to be talking about some of the other things that have um, occurred during his administration. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Let me just get my um, sip of coffee. I'm, I'm sipping some very good Ethiopian Harare. Very good. Mm. Oh, very tasteful. All right. Let's sit down and unpack this. If you have your pipe, uh, go ahead and spark it up. And... Um, Let's see what we're talking about. So, let's kick it off like this. Let's look at all these people 
that were with Trump um, when he was campaigning. They they helped build his campaign, assemble it, put it together, uh, bolster votes, and just everything. You know, you know, campaigning is a big thing; costs a lot of money. You have to appeal to the people. You know, Trump had his whole "Make America Great Again." And it is now December 2017, a little over a year from when Trump was elected in November of 2016. A lot of those people that played incremental and key roles are no longer part of Trump's administrative cabinet. Let's start off with this one. <clears throat> Sally Yates. Do you remember Sally Yates? Now, <clears throat> we have to remember that there is this sentiment among many Americans and particularly uh, uh, Republicans and conservatives. And um, you also have to think about uh, individuals that just have fear um, of difference. Uh, it's an ignorance. You know, they, they, they feel that, oh, if you're a Muslim, you're a terrorist. And so remember, Trump had uh, decided to try and implement a travel ban on Muslims, you know, Muslim countries uh, saying, look, if you're coming from a Muslim country, uh, you can't come here. And, and you have you go through a meticulous scrutiny of, you know, your social media contacts, who you affiliated with, jobs, such and such. Now, Sally Yates, uh, Sally Yates was the acting attorney general at the time uh, when Trump decided he wanted to uh, put this travel ban in motion. Uh, Sally Yates was fired by Trump uh, for failing to uphold Trump's travel ban. So she was one of the first casualties of uh, Trump's uh, time in office. That was Sally Yates, the acting attorney general, all right? Now, let's not forget about Anthony Scaramucci. And you're going to see uh, a lot of people leave when Anthony Scaramucci uh, comes into play. Um, now, Anthony Scaramucci, he was supposed to be the White House communications director, but he was removed 10 days after being installed um, because he was giving this interview with the New Yorker magazine. And when he was giving the interview, you know, this guy was given some of the most vile uh profane and foul language, you know, talking about something, something, somebody sucks somebody's cock or somebody's cock is just like, you know, it was, it was very unprofessional. There was other things, um, that I would have to research more on, but Anthony Scaramucci, he was let go. You know, he also, there were things about him lying about the amount of money that he had, uh, versus what he's reporting. So he was a white house communication director. Trump fired him. Right. Um, now, Let's not forget about Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn was the national security advisor. All right. Uh, 23 days after the inauguration, um, you had Michael Flynn um, being let go by the Trump administration um, under the whole auspices of misleading the administration about his dealings with Russia because, you know, you had this whole big thing going on where, hey, you know, Russia somehow colluded with people within the Trump administration or Russia was cooking up and stirring up uh, propaganda that somehow um, swayed voters politically to vote this way versus that way. Uh, and so, Michael Flynn, the national security advisor, he was mixed up in all that. And so he was let go. All right. So that's Anthony Scaramucci. That's Sally Yates. That's Michael Flynn. All right. Don't forget you had pre uh, Harara. He was a U.S. attorney. Uh, 49 days. Uh, he was fired. And I'd have to do more background when I when I Google some of the stories. It wasn't necessarily clear to me. And I'll do a, a thorough uh, year and wrap up on the on the last show of the uh, year. We'll probably have more on uh, Preet Harara, but he was let go. Forty nine days, U.S. Attorney. All right. Now, here is the other thing, right? 
FBI director, James Comey, all right, 110 days after inauguration, uh, Comey was uh, let go, he was fired uh, by the Trump administration. Uh, they were saying that Comey was investigating the Trump campaign's possible collusion with Russia. And see, Trump let him go because he felt like, hey, if Comey is supposed to be working with me, you know, he's the FBI director, you know, I'm the president, why are you investigating my campaign to see if there was any ties or collusion with Russia? So Trump viewed Comey as a threat, then decided to move him out of position to remove the threat. Now you got a lot of that blowback coming back to bite Trump in his butt. Um, and so Comey was the one that was actually keeping notes of all meetings that he had with Trump. Trump, um, Comey was the one where Trump asked him, uh, do I have your loyalty? Do I have your loyalty? You know, uh, so there, there's a lot of things that still may come about with uh, this whole Russia uh, investigation with the election and a campaign. So FBI Director Comey's out. So that makes Anthony Scaramucci, Sally Yates, Michael Flynn, Preet Harara, and James Comey. Now, that's not all. They're still dropping like flies. Don't forget press secretary and Saturday Night Live favorite, Sean Spicer. Uh, Sean Spicer is a press secretary 183 days out from inauguration. Um, he resigned after Anthony Scaramucci's position as um, White House communication director. Uh, there was some type of friction or beef or internal uh, clashes uh, between Scaramucci and Spicer, and uh, Spicer decided to wave the white flag and step down uh, when Anthony Scaramucci became the White House communication director. So Sean Spicer said, I'm no longer going to be press secretary uh, under Trump administration. And so currently the press secretary is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. All right. Now, let's continue. Uh, Rance Priebus, right? Rance Priebus, chief of staff, 189 days after uh, he resigned after a public feud with, once again, Anthony Scaramucci. So, when Scaramucci he became a White House communication director, you saw Sean Spicer leave, and then there was that feud between Rance Priebus and Anthony Scaramucci, and since that, Rance Priebus decided to step down. So, Scaramucci was behind uh, the loss of two of Trump's cabinet members, all right? So that makes Anthony Scaramucci, Sally Yates, Michael Flynn, Preet Harara, James Comey, Sean Spicer, Ranks Priebus, all right? All the king's horses and all the king's men. Now, let's move along. Uh, Tom Price. Tom Price was Secretary of Health and Human Services. Now, this is the guy that was found to have been uh, wasting over a million dollars of taxpayers' money because he was um, using taxpayers' money to charter uh, private jets and private flights uh, domestically and to Africa and to Asia and to Europe. Uh, so the Trump administration let him go. All right, so that's Tom Price. Um, that didn't look good. Um, that would look, If he kept him on board, if... Uh, they knew that, then he would be part of the swamp that he claims he's going to drain. So, Tom Price was out, all right? Next, um, you had Sebastian Gorka. Now, Sebastian Gorka, he was out uh, this summer, August 25th, and he was the deputy assistant to Donald Trump, and he was a close ally to... Um, the chief uh, director or chief executive officer of uh, Breitbart News, um, Steve Bannon. And what you're going to see, uh, both with the same uh, position, is when Trump was campaigning and running for election, Trump was making these um, 
you know, broad statements. He was trying to appeal to many of his white base, uh, the right wing, meaning the white nationalists. Um, with that, uh, they call it MAGA, uh, abbreviation for Make America Great Again, uh, slogan and campaign, which is dog whistle politics, um, and he say for white supremacy. Um, Trump was able to garner and sequester much of that right wing white nationalist populist that demographic uh, to bolster his vote to help push him into office um, now Sebastian Gorka uh, and as you'll see we'll talk about Steve Bannon they started holding Trump's uh, feet to the fire about different promises pledges oaths that uh, allegedly Trump had made to them as far as what he would do while in office and if he's actually executing these promises. So uh, Sebastian Gorka had stepped down and he was deputy assistant, all right? Now, I said his his partner in crime was Steve Bannon. Now, Steve Bannon was the chief executive, um, I think, officer or he was chief executive of something. Uh, for Breitbart News, maybe cheap editor, but for Breitbart News, which is an uh, ultra-right, uh, conservative uh, magazine website, um, deals heavily in right-wing uh, politics and policies, um, very heavily steeped in that. Trump had him as his chief strategist in the White House. Uh, and so Steve Bannon ultimately started uh, developing some uh, disdain. They were saying that there was a lot of clashes um, within the White House between Steve Bannon and the Trump administration because he was not, Trump was not necessarily meeting all of the promises and demands that he had with that, you know, whole white nationalist faction of Trump's electoral uh, positions. So, um, as Sebastian Gorka and Steve Banning were trying to hold uh, Trump's feet to the fire, um, there was some there was some some clash, some feuding, and from that they 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 uh, parted ways. So Steve Bannon was gone. Sebastian Gorka was gone. All right. Uh, now we can't forget about Michael Duke. Uh, that's D U B K E. Uh, he resigned as White House Communications Director uh, in 2017, and he was the one that was replaced by Anthony Scaramucci. So, before Anthony Scaramucci came in, you had Michael Duke, and that's who Sean Spicer was under. All right? So, let's look at this now. That is Anthony Scaramucci, Sally Yates, Michael Flynn. Preet Harara, James Comey, Sean Spicer, Rance Priebus, Tom Price, Sebastian Gorka, Steve Bannon, Michael Duke. Okay, if this is a chessboard, that's like you're, you're, you wiped out <laughs> like your whole uh, army, but it, it gets deeper, you know, it, it goes much deeper. All right, now let's move along. We can't forget about Walter Schaub. Walter Schaub, S-H-A-U-B. He was the director of the Office of Government Ethics. Okay? Director of the Office of Government Ethics. And so, uh, he was let go in July of 2017. Okay? And he and the Trump administration, they were feuding about Donald Trump's financial holdings. So there's something in there that we have to really, people have to dig deeper and see nobody has still seen Trump's taxes, okay? Trump still has yet to reveal his tax information. That is still not available to the public, even though all former presidents have made their tax um, information available. Trump has yet to do that. But now this was a person that was actually in Trump's cabinet. He was the director of ethics. Um, but he said, hey, look, on the real, your financial holdings are very shaky. 
And he had issues with that. Um, and he was quoted as saying that the Trump, administra the Trump administration is, quote unquote, a laughing stock. So he's out of there. Walter Schaub. All right. Now, let's not forget about Paul Manafort. All right. Now, Paul Manafort is Trump's former campaign manager. And this is the guy that was accused of acting as an, quote, unregistered agent of a foreign principal and conspiracy against the United States. This is the same guy that um, they found he had multiple passports and visas under different names and aliases. And under those different names and aliases, he had different bank accounts, you know. And so he, he was, he's out of there um, and still may be brought up on criminal charges, um, which is rightfully so. I mean, you can't, <laughs> you cannot have these different aliases and names uh, and passports, uh, multiple. And it, it wasn't just like one or two, it was multiple uh, different bank accounts like that. So th this will go all into uh, banking fraud, uh, wire fraud, all of that. So uh, Paul Manafort is in deep, deep trouble. Um, and they're even trying to connect that with Russian contacts with the Russian government, um, especially when you're talking about the campaign manager. So he's in hot water uh, stewing right now. All right. Uh, and then you have George Papadopoulos. This is the 29-year-old Chicago native uh, Greek guy, George Papadopoulos, uh, not from Webster. <laughs> um, George Papadopoulos. He was a member of Trump's foreign policy advisory panel, and he was deposed and arrested for giving a false statement to the FBI about his contacts with the Russian government and Trump's in relation to Trump's campaigns and relations. So, uh, matter of fact, it was just on uh, I think it was December fourth or last night where um, he was coming back from Dusseldorf, Germany. And uh, on, a, on a Lufthansa flight. And when he got off the Lufthansa flight, the FBI was right there, arrested him, took him <laughs> to jail in Alexandria. So he's actually, uh, he's he was in custody. He had his um, Chicago defense attorneys uh, in contact with the FBI. And so now he's going through the whole ringer of trying to do whatever it is he needs to do to vindicate himself or just get himself out of hot water. So let's run down that litany of all the king's horses and all the king's men. Um, so that's Anthony Scaramucci, Sally Yates, Michael Flynn, Preet Harara, James Comey, Sean Spicer, Rance Priebus, Tom Price, Sebastian Gorka, Steve Bannon, Michael Duke, Walter Shaw, Paul Manafort and George Papadopoulos. That's 14 people that are no longer with the Trump administration. 14. That's almost like 1.1 people per month since he was uh, uh, inaugurated, right? Elected and inaugurated. So this is, um, this is big stuff. Uh, and I think people just have to be aware, all right? Now, uh, if you're just tuning in, this is Dr. Smory Swaggart, a.k.a. Doc Swag, and you're listening to my show, The Pendulum, every Wednesday at 8 p.m., all right? And we're talking about, today we're talking about um, all the king's horses, all the king's men, Trumpy Dumpty, um, all the different uh, members of the administration, that have um, been deposed, they have lost their position, they've either been fired or they resigned or under criminal investigation uh, within the Trump administration. So, you know, serious blows, you know, you, you're taking serious blows here. And now you have a lot of stuff going on with Trump uh, himself. Okay, now let's move along. Let's, let's talk about some more things that... Uh, when we talk about the Trump administration, 
<clears throat> and we talk about the Republicans uh, and their they are many of them are war hawks. You know, whenever they are, uh, whenever you think of Republicans, many of them are always trying to see, oh, well, what about our national defense? It's always national defense, national defense. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're war hawks. They're, they're always banging the war drums. Um, they're the ones that's always stirring up. Well, what, a, what about? They, they turn, they turn um, speculative. They turn potential. They turn supposed. They turn theoretical problems into immediate and almost real life problems that keep the war industry machine, keeps those gears constantly cranking. So we're in all actuality, the U.S. isn't doing, the U.S. is not at war with Iran, but if we keep saying, well, Iran is trying to build up this nuclear arsenal, then uh, this is going to be an issue. This is something we have to, we have to uh, take care of. We have to handle this. North Korea is doing uh, X, Y, and Z. And so, you know, this represents a problem. Uh, you know, over in Africa, you have Al-Shabaab. Uh, that could be a problem. You know, you have Boko Haram. Uh, you know, that could be a problem. You know, you have ISIS. You know, that could be a problem. You know, you have Al-Qaeda. You know, this could be a real problem. You know, you have the PLO. You know, this could be a real problem. And, and, and you know, uh, uh, you, you have, you, so what you have is all of these different targets that they they bolster up. It's like they just keep increasing the propaganda to give reason to either be overseas in other countries, to oversee them, to patrol them, to control them, um, to intervene, um, and because of that, we need to make sure that we have our military equipment up to par. And what does that do? It creates a stimulus for the war industry economies. Uh, when I say the war industry economies, we're talking about these corporations that construct the grids, the war grids, the missile defense system, the satellite defense systems, nuclear warheads, uh, nuclear subs. Uh, they create your drones, all the high-tech sophisticated surveillance, uh, robots. Um, is, is whatever you could think about when you think of war, excuse me, and sophistication, um, these companies, they deal with all of that, all of that. And so when you hear that, the names you have to think about are Lockheed Martin, uh, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, BAE, uh, General Dynamics, Boeing, uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, L3 Technologies, uh, United Technologies, and a couple of more, but these are some that you just need to have uh, readily available when you when you have these discussions on war industry economies, and they're they're big. Uh, whenever there's war, you see these stocks uh, take off. People invest in them, and they're very um, lucrative for people that have money to purchase these stocks. So what I did was I said, you know, well, we know that we have war hawks in office now. You hear Trump constantly beating the drums of North Korea and Russia and Iran, right? Uh, I then went to look at the, the graph, the graphical data about the stock prices. How much were these war industry uh, corporations, how much their stocks went before Trump was elected. And as of today, uh, December 6, 2017, how much their stock prices are. All right. 
and then I computed the percent growth of stock from pre-election to now. All right. So let, let, let's let's unpack this and see what we're looking at. And if you're an investor, you can appreciate these percent changes. Uh, most stocks don't grow <laughs> like this. Um, so Lockheed and Martin, uh, before the election on November 4th, all these prices that I'm naming were on November 4th. That's as close as I can cut it on the graph um, that, that I can pull up. So November 4th, 2016, all these prices. So Lockheed and Martin, it was $236 per share, all right? As of today, it has increased to $312. So it went from $236 to $312 per share. That's an increase of $76 per share, or you can say it is increased by 25% in just one year. That's significant. That That's significant returns right there. That is significant returns. Usually you expect to see things like, you know, 3%, 5%, things like that. This is huge right here when you're talking about investing in corporations, right? Um, Northrop Grumman, all right, before the election, their stock share was $225. As of today, December 6, it's $300. So it went from $225 to $300. So that's an increase of $75 and an increase of 25%. Okay? Huge. Huge. It's almost five times normal returns. All right? Uh, Raytheon, all right? Now, Raytheon does a lot of missile defense uh, and things like that, especially with the Navy. Um, before Trump was elected, on November 4th, Raytheon was $132 per share. As of today, December 6, 2017, it's $187. So it went from $132 to $187. All right, so that's that went up fifty five dollars. All right, and that's an increase of thirty percent. All right. Now you also have BAE. Now this one was modest. You didn't really see anything. Um, November fourth, their stock price was five hundred and thirty nine dollars a share, and as of today, it's five hundred and forty nine dollars a share. So that only went up ten. It only went up ten dollars, which is an increase of two percent. All right. So that's BAE Systems. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now you have General Dynamics. Um, on November fourth, before election, their shares were one hundred and forty nine dollars. As of today, December sixth, it's two hundred dollars a share. All right. So they went up by fifty one dollars, <throat> and that's an increase of twenty five point five percent. All right. So that's General Dynamics, Boeing. Boeing is booming. Boeing is booming. Boeing, out of all the defense industry economy stocks, uh, has seen the most exponential growth. Uh, on November 4th, before election, their stock was $139. As of today, December 6th, 2017, it's $278. So it went from $139 to $278. That means it doubled. It went up by 50%. It doubled, all right, in one year. That's big. That's, that's, you don't see too many stocks do that, just double uh, within a year. So that's big. Boeing is doing big things. And Boeing is actually, you know, they, they build these uh, fighter jets and aircrafts. They do a lot of um, testing on the aircrafts. Um, they've actually sold so many of these new um fighter jets and bombers to other countries, I think even to Israel. So Boeing is making big money. They're booming. Um, Booz Allen Hamilton. So Booz Allen Hamilton, um, they, uh, on November 4th, uh, 2016, their stock was $31 a share. 
uh, as of today, it is $38 a share. So um, that went up 19%. And that's just a difference of $7. Um, L3 Technologies, all right, L3 Technologies on November 4th, before election, they were $134 per share. As of today, December 6th, they cost $197 a share, all right? So that's the increase of $63, and that's the increase of 32%. That's very good returns right there, very good. It's beating the national average on most stocks, on many stocks. Um, and then you have United Technologies on November 4th, 2016, before the election. It was $101 per share, and as of today, December 6th, 2017, it's $121 per share. And so that's an increase of $20, which is an increase of 16% for them. So they're all in the green um, doing very well. So this is why when you hear them beating the war drums and propping up all of these um, stories and you know, they talk about the threats that are happening and threat levels and, you know, we might be at war. It, it one, it, it, it will, for those that believe in the war industry economy, stock returns, they're going to invest more into it, hoping to generate more returns because they know when they put more of that in, they are going to build more and more machines, more and more equipment, more grids, more upgrades, all of that. And it's not just for the U.S. They also export this technology and sell that to other nations and other countries. You know, if there is a war going on, then guess what? My ally should have good technology also. And so I have to make sure that my team is in power. I'm not just going to give them missiles. I'm not just going to give them drones. I'm not just going to give them fighter pilot, fighter jets. I'm not just going to give them submarines. Uh or aircrafts, um, I'm going to sell it to them. You're, you're my boy, you're my ally, um, and if we're at war, I want you to be uh, fully equipped just like I am, but I'm not just going to give it to you. I'm going to sell it to you for you know a nice price um, just so that you can protect yourself in war, but I'm still making money off of you even though we're cool. So you know there's money in this uh, by cooking up drama. So that's what you see happening here uh, with these war industry economy stocks. People need to take heed to that. Um, if that's something that you're into, if you don't care, if it's in a conflict of interest for you, then war industry economy stocks, uh, if you have the budget for it, may be ideal for you. Um, some people have conflicts of interest and, you know, say, hey, look, you know, what? I'm not going to invest in that. And I can truly understand that. Um, somebody that invests stock market themselves, I've looked at it like, oh, wow, you know, this is some good growth, but <clears throat> I have not invested in it because I don't believe in the war like that. Um, we have to be careful about uh, the state of war, humanity, and the potential for the, uh, the destruction of mankind and, and Earth uh, with all these nuclear capabilities that we have. So these are things that's happening, right? So we talked about all that. Now, we also, let's talk about some of the other things that's been going on uh, with the, during the Trump administration. You know, it's a, it's a lot going on and we'll do a full year in wrap up um, of America in 2017, but just you know, some more stuff. So um, we know we have the threats supposedly from Kim Jong-un you know, he uh, is, is, is reported that North Korea was able to uh, facilitate a, and execute a launch of a missile or some type of um, uh, aircraft. No, it was a missile or something that went uh, that was able to go beyond the U.S. Uh, space station. And so uh, with that being noted and reported, uh, that kind of sent ripples through the intelligence and military community uh, saying, hey, well, you know, North Korea does have the capability and equipment and technology uh, to compete with us militarily and technologically. Uh, so now uh, 
the intelligence community and the military, uh, you know, they have their huggies in a bunch. So North Korea is, 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 is an issue. Uh, Kim Jong-un, the leader of uh, North Korea, he's, uh, you know, he's not really backing down from Trump. And, you know, Trump and uh, Kim Jong-un have been volleying different insults uh, at each other and, you know, things of that nature. So North Korea's been one of the big things on the radar uh, for the Trump administration. All right. Uh, Russia, you know, we had the whole thing with Putin and the uh, supposedly the tampering of the U.S. elections by propaganda, by stories that have supposedly been uh, created and somehow circulated through social media and the news to influence voter opinion, uh, voter uh, hacks within the DNC. You have, the, you know, claiming with that. Um, then you have supposedly con collusion with Russia with the Trump administration, Trump campaign. Uh, so you have the whole big thing with that. And then, of course, um, Russia has its own nuclear capability. So uh, we're, we're seeing some very um, important and very big uh, situations and scenarios where uh, anything can pop off, really. But once again, it it's fuel for the war industry economy. Uh, those that are invested, uh, they're loving this right now. All right. Now, let's not forget about this during Trump's uh, Trump's administration. And that's Charlottesville. Um, we talk about all of the different um, the different racial uh Attacks. We talk about the racial climate and tension within America. Uh, it's boiling to a fever pitch. Uh, and so, you know, this summer you had, um, was it Richard Spencer, who's, um, he's a, a leader of this, uh, the alt-right. And so, you know, him and a couple other people had linked together and decided to do a <clears throat> march uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia, I believe it was UVA. So, you know, you had <clears throat> these hundreds of uh, white nationalists um, in their polo shirts and khakis wearing, uh, you know, carrying these tiki torches, uh, demonstrating. And then you have the next day, you had uh, many of them coming out and clad in um, military apparel, military gear. Some of them had even down to like tactical uh, guns with them out in public. They were clashing with, uh, you know, anti-demonstrating um, citizens of Charlottesville in the streets. Um, you had the police there. So it was, a, it was a big thing. You had the guy that uh, was a member of that that plowed through the crowd with his car, um, hit and um, injured many people and killed a young lady, young white lady. Uh, but you had Trump come out and say, look, you know, well, these are good guys. We have good guys on both sides um, and bad guys on both sides. So uh, this is uh, what you're seeing here. And uh, very, very interesting. When we talk about the vitriol, when we talk about the hatred that is simmering and brewing. Uh, the fact that Trump can say, hey. You know, well, these are still good guys. Uh, you know, it speaks uh, very, it, it speaks tremendous uh, hmm, contradiction when you know what they stand for, okay? The history of white nationalism, uh, KKK, skinheads, neo-Nazis. We know what that means. That's terrorism for black people and other people of color right there. And so for him to, uh, condone that and support that uh, it speaks a lot and so that's why I also spoke a lot when he had Steve Bannon and Sebastian Gorka in office uh, with him all right um, so that was Charlottesville um, the other thing that we have now is the uh, Senate tax bill and this is the bill that uh, many people are, are like look you know this is going to dismantle um, all the financial safety nets uh, for 
of the average American. It's given tax breaks and tax incentives to uh, corporations, uh, big time owners of corporations and the wealthy, uh, you know, the elite one percent, uh, those in the upper class, they're getting a lot of tax breaks. But the middle class uh, and, and lower middle class, they are really getting they're getting uh, short change. They're, they are getting short change on these taxes. They're going to be paying more on the taxes. All right. And then the other thing that people have to look at is that they want to also block. They want to stop. They want to cut um, student loan forgiveness. So there is a public service student loan forgiveness program that's been in place. Whereas if you took a student loan out and then after you've graduated from your respective educational institution and you work in a, a service, a public service sector for a, a nonprofit organization or uh, something of that nature, there's different classifications of it, um, or 501c3, um, you, after 10 years of payments, can have your student loan debt erased, uh, forgiven, um, and you'll be free. And so that's a big burden on many of the graduates recently, you know, because tuition has uh, increased exponentially across almost every spectrum of educational institutions, from the elite to uh, city uh, and state universities to, you know, just the private institutions. Tuition has increased. And so you have students taking out whopping loans for med school, uh, dental school, law school, pharmacy school, uh, just education, uh, anything you could think of pretty much that requires tuition. You have people taking out large sums of student loans. People were banking on this student loan forgiveness program to say, look, I won't have to be saddled with this because <clears throat> Once I get this removed, I'm now free up. I'm freeing up some money now. Where marriage, uh, household, uh, other things, investments, I have more money available to me as opposed to paying this student loan bill monthly into perpetuity. Well, they want to cut that student loan forgiveness out, which would keep people uh, enslaved to this debt, this large amount of debt. Uh, that they had just to get uh, a degree, you know? And so, you know, this 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 is sad. People need to be making sure that they are contacting their representatives and saying, hey, look, we're not for this. And then the, the whole tax bill uh, is, is, is pure effery, okay? Because the other thing is this, uh, the tax shelters, is, it's, it's protecting the uh, one, the 1% and the rich that have tax shelters and tax havens in place. You have the Canary Islands. Uh, you have, um, what is it? Singapore, Luxembourg, Germany. You have all these various tax havens, um, Swiss banks, where these major corporations that are American, they are funneling lots of their revenue into these tax havens and tax shelters to avoid having to pay these taxes. So what they're doing is they're siphoning all the money that they're making from the American consumer, not paying their taxes, hoarding it overseas. But the American, the average American citizen that is being a productive citizen, actually participating in their duties and obligations to pay their taxes, they have to pay the taxes, pay even more taxes according to this tax bill, while at the same time, the people that own these corporations that are making trillions of dollars don't have to pay anything. And so this tax bill protects them. You know, Bernie Sanders was even talking about this. And there was an article in Business Insider about two years ago. It was in Business Insider and it was in the Huffington Post saying that there's trillions of dollars in offshore tax havens from American corporations. So, you know, it begs, it begs that question to ask, listen, if they can't pay, if they don't have to pay 
for money that they've made and they've earned, they've generated their revenue. Why does the average American have to pay? Why? Why should I have to pay my taxes if you can't hold them accountable? What makes them different? It's the citizens that keep the country afloat. So American citizens need to think about this. Um, we also would have to talk about the uh, Libyan slave trade that's now propped up. We had uh, when Obama was in office under Obama administration and the auspices of Hillary Clinton, uh, you had um, and, the, and the UN and the Security Council, you had uh, Muammar Gaddafi, uh, the leader of Libya, you had him killed. And that destabilized that whole region. Muammar Gaddafi was, he kept that balance. Once they got rid of him, that leadership was void. And so now you have all of these black Africans being enslaved. And the videos are surfacing, the photos are surfacing, bodies, black bodies being washed up on shore, people being hung. People arrested, tied up like herd and cattle. You have people with organs being stolen, right? So all of this is going on right now uh, in 2017 uh, under Trump's administration. Uh, you also have to think about the, Ni the Niger, the Niger conspiracy. This is with uh, the Green Beret, I believe, I believe it was a Green Beret or a Navy SEAL, but uh, Sergeant La David Johnson, a black man uh, in the military, uh, him and uh, a few of his uh, uh, fellow soldiers were in Niger, Africa, and they it's you know it's reported that they were ambushed uh, and he was killed. They say when they were rescued, uh, somehow he was left behind, but the other guys made it back. Uh, well, when they come to find out, you know, he was killed, uh, dismembered. Um, they, you know, there was a whole thing with Trump uh, disrespecting his wife uh, as if like, you know, well, he knew what he was getting into. Very dismissive um, and disregarding uh, about the the mourning uh, and the respect uh, for that family for the contribution of service uh, that uh, Sergeant Le David Johnson uh, gave to this country. Uh, they gave a they clo a closed uh, casket military funeral service. Uh, come to find out now that uh, his full body wasn't there, uh, maybe it was more so just remains. Uh, they had found more remains of his body still in Niger, uh, Africa. So it's just a, a complete mess. Uh, it became a big thing because. Everybody was like, well, we didn't know that there was a military uh, campaign or a military presence in Niger, Africa. What were they in Africa for? You know, and so but people don't understand that even under the Obama administration is when you had uh, AFRICOM kicked off. And so what people don't understand is this out of the 54 countries in Africa, America has operations in 53 out of 54 countries in Africa, America has military presence in 53 of those countries. Repeat it one more time. 53 of the 54 countries in Africa has military presence from America. You got to do your homework and ask the questions. So people were surprised, like, oh, we had presence in in Niger, we didn't even know. Yeah, they got it in 53 countries. Only one doesn't. And I'd be surprised if that's not something that'll be um, <laughs> undone uh, shortly. So you have these things going on here. And then uh, you also have, uh, I think Trump, this will have to research more, but I believe Trump, he did something with uh, naming Jerusalem as the new embassy uh, for the United States, something of that nature. And I'll have that smoothed out for you uh, next week or, or when we when we do our final year in wrap up of 2017 uh, events. 
and so that's what that's what that's what's going on, y'all. Uh, it's a lot. It is a lot. So, with that being said, everybody, stay educated, stay woke, help people out when you can, spread love, think about humanity. Uh, let's think about those that's fortunate than ourselves. Think about those that have family members overseas that are serving. Let's think about those that are wrongfully in prison. Let's think about those families that are in mourning from uh, gang violence, uh, victims of gang violence, those who have who are in mourning from uh, police brutality. Uh, let's think about the homeless. Uh, let's think about those that are losing their jobs. We just have to be mindful of our positions and our privilege at all times, right? Um, this is Dr. Samori Swaggart, aka Doc Swag. This is the pendulum. Every Wednesday, 8 p.m. on Source Radio Network. Uh, make sure you check us out. We have a lot of great, great, great shows from health and wealth and fitness to art and music. We do it all here. We do it all here. We knock it down thoroughly. Um, if you like to get my album, I have a very great uh, spoken word and um, jazz album. Very smooth, very very smooth. It's actually a um, a quiet on the Quiet Storm section of Amazon. It hit uh, the bestseller uh, four times in a Quiet Storm category, knocking Marvin Gaye's "Hear My Dear" album to number two. Uh, and it's called "Porn," P O R N, poetry, oration, rhythm, and narratives. Um, on Amazon and iTunes, you could find it. And also you can find the, uh, my audio book. It's called speak on it. Mandatory conversations for black America. You can also hit me on Twitter at doc swag. Oh, six. That's D O C S W A G G zero six. All right. You all be blessed. Share this and we will chop it up later. And I'm about to head out the saddle. All right. Peace. <laughs>